Welcome back everybody. This is part two of this video. So if you haven't seen part one, uh, you can find a link to that in the description. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the show. So 27, Microsoft, thinking MS maybe, program, well, maybe thinking DOS, um, or actually with an E, we might have Excel, left behind former church. Yeah, so this is Excel. So a Microsoft program is Excel. So that's our definition element. Left is abbreviated to the letter L in a lot of contexts, and that is coming behind something else. So the L comes at the end. Another word for former, oh, another word for former is X, EX, and another abbreviation for church, which may not be that commonly known to everyone, especially outside of cryptics, is CE, which stands for Church of England. So you will see that come up quite a bit. And again, it seems weird if you've never seen it before, but once you've seen it once or twice, you, and there's quite a few different small abbreviations for, for church, um, you can kind of run them off in your head. Uh, and in this case, it was easy enough to solve from the, the definition anyway. So let's try 25 for a short one with an L in it. Uh, fit desk after removing top. Um, so I think we're going to look for a word that means fit. That'll be our final answer. And the reason I think that is that we've got this removing top. And that, for all the world, seems to suggest that we're going to take a word for desk and we're going to remove its top letter. So a five letter word for desk, take off the first letter and get a word that means fit. And the word for desk that comes to mind is table. And if we take the T off table, we get able, which is another word for fit. <laughs> and again, this is a nice um, misdirection in terms of the surface reading because it seems like we're talking about fitting a desk um, in some space after removing the top of it. So fit being in the, sense, in the sense of having enough space for, but actually we need to read it in the sense of being adequate or appropriate or capable, etc. cetera. Uh, so 20 down. What have you got for us? Oh, I, saw a, I saw a clue with mints being unwrapped just the other day. Um, <laughs> mints unwrapped, um, I think it was a, I think it was another Liam crossword actually. Mints unwrapped before performance is complete. So immediately I'm thinking um, mints unwrapped. This unwrapped is one of these indicator words that tells us to take the outside letters of something. So uh, literally unwrap the word. So if we unwrap mints, we get INT. And that seems promising because we have an I at the start of the clue. So if we try INT here, and that would mean that our final um, definition, our final regular part of the clue is probably gonna be um, complete. And you might see a word there that means complete, but you might also think, okay, so we've dealt with mints unwrapped. That's gonna come before, so just gonna come next to a word for performance, and then the final answer will be complete. Another word for performance, three letters with a C in the middle, is an act. So intact is complete. Um, and I'll just make a quick mention that this um, sometimes with cryptic setters, the surface reading of the clue, like just the meaning as you read it directly, um, doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's, it's kind of a bit of a hodgepodge. Um, one nice thing about Liam's crosswords, apart from being pretty approachable for beginners, is that the surface readings are usually pretty sound. and he, he puts a lot of effort into making that the case. So mints being unwrapped before performance is complete. That's a plausible sentence. You imagine a scenario in which someone's sitting in a theatre and the performance is not yet complete and they're unwrapping their mints. Um, so it has some superficial meaning to it. But of course, the final answer intact really has nothing to do with the actual surface reading of the clue, which is most often as it is and as it should be. Um, <clears throat> 24 across. Wasteful background actor versus precious metal worker. Um, right, so just from the letters in place, I've got an idea where this might be going. Um, but let's have a think about this. If Imagine we're cold solving this. Um, wasteful background actor versus precious metal worker. Well, I think this probably be a fairly difficult one to solve 
um, cold, uh, although there are some, some common ways in, so let's have a look. Um, we might think a background actor, so someone who works in the background on a TV show is called an extra, and we do have E, T and A, so let's imagine that was right. And here you might think, oh, well, extra, this is gonna be, you know, there's not too many words that will fit here. Um, versus, this comes up a lot, it just gets abbreviated to V when you see something about sports, it'll say Team V versus Team B um, with a V. And then um, Precious Metal Worker. Now, you might see now this is gonna be extravagant. And again, this is a nice thing with cryptics, you might think, well, what's, what's happening here? Precious Metal and Worker a-G-A-N-T, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. But it introduces a couple of very common concepts in cryptics. One is the use of the chemical um, uh, abbreviations from the periodic table. So a precious metal is silver, and silver is represented by the letters A-G on the periodic table. So that's our A-G. And a worker uh, is very commonly used in cryptics to mean an ant. Um, so these are synonymous and we get extravagant. Um, if we didn't, if we hadn't had any word letters in place at the beginning, probably what I would have seen is that word worker and thought, ah, oh, that's usually A-N-T. And then I would have maybe worked backwards from there. Probably would have eventually realized, well, first of all, if you, if you imagine for a second that worker is going to be ant or something similar, then you know that the definition is going to be the other end. So we're now looking for a word that means wasteful. So that's a useful information to know. And then I probably would have seen background actor as extra. And then the rest kind of writes itself. And then I'd work back and go, oh yeah, versus precious metal is AG. Probably precious metal might be the hard, hardest part of that to figure out um, because it's not specifically talking about silver. Um, so, but yeah, so that's that one solved, and that's most of this side of the grid done. Let's try to complete it with this one. Make shoes with color of pavement. Uh, yeah, so um, the C and the B were the giveaway here, because we we're talking about shoes, and the thing that came to mind was um, cobble. Uh, it's probably not too many words that start with C-B, um, but it, I started with that in mind and then thought, well, uh, make shoes would be cobbles. So I put the S on there. And then another word for, for color, in fact, I think I saw the word pavement, therefore, as the definition and thought, well, a word for pavement would be cobblestone, and then realized that a tone is a color. So that's that. Now, five down, holy book for primary school charity. Right, so unusual little structure of word, this with the S and the L, and um, primary school is the giveaway here. Uh, this is abbreviated to PS very often, and it seems unlikely that you'd start a word with PS, but of course you can, and when you think of holy, um, holy book, you might think of the Psalms, and um, this word arms is a little unusual, uh, Charity is an old-fashioned word. I don't know how commonly it's used nowadays, but it's um, maybe even more a kind of a biblical kind of era word, meaning charity or tax or um, money donated, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, holy book as well. When I saw that at first, I thought another common thing we see is OT for Old Testament or NT for New Testament. So that's something to watch out for. But in this case, that was actually our definition element, and the PS was really what gave it to me, especially having the S in place already. Six down, Quiz's father of mule smuggling ketamine. <laughs> so great surface reading uh, and a fairly easy clue. Um, so uh, ketamine here is a giveaway, uh, although it may not be that immediate a thought to the average person, uh, but for those who have done cryptics a lot, ketamine is abbreviated to K, um, and so we've got this word smuggling again actually, so we're gonna take a word for the father of a mule 
and smuggle the letter K. Um, and um, the father of a mule is an ass. And K for ketamine, we get asks, which is quizzes. I actually didn't know that a mule's father is... Yeah, how, how is that? Is that a mule? A mule is a result of... It's the offspring of a of a donkey and something else as a horse I'm not sure um, so nine across <clears throat> uh, give a sermon at opening of Scientology summit yeah so <clears throat> this is a very easy indicator word opening of Scientology so literally the opening letter of Scientology gives us an S and we have an S there so that's probably what that's doing and then we have this word and since, since that opening of Scientology comes at the beginning this give a sermon is presumably then the definition and so we'd need to think of a four letter word for summit that goes after our opening of Scientology and the summit of a hill is, is to peak and to speak is to give a sermon and again, a beautiful service reading, giving a sermon at the opening of a Scientology summit. Perfectly plausible sentence. Uh, so, seven down. Supper on Island included Italian beer. Well, I think I know this from the letters. Ah, uh, yes, and this is, um, this is another hidden clue. So, I just immediately thought of Peroni as an Italian beer. Uh, actually, no, it's not quite true. What I, I think what I initially thought was, <clears throat> is there a short word for beer in here? And commonly that is ale, A-L-E. I thought, well, A-L-E is not going to fit in there. <clears throat> um, sometimes Italian, we're looking for an Italian word for, for beer, um, but uh, nothing sprung, sprung to mind. Um, and then I thought, what if it's an Italian beer? Then that's the answer. And so I thought of Peroni. And then I can confirm that that's correct because I can see supper on island contains Peroni and included is a very literal hidden indicator. This is saying in, included in this expression is a word for Italian beer, Peroni. So K is the first letter, should be helpful. Finders of soccer players, perhaps, question mark. So this is a nice clue there is something a little bit figurative going on here in terms of the the processing this is a, what's called a double definition clue um, this is a more a less precise one than some I'll explain what I mean um, so we need a word that means finders in inverted commas and a word that means soccer players or one of the one of the players on a soccer field and you might think of the word a, a keeper um, a goalkeeper so keepers are soccer players, and as the saying goes, finders keepers. So, <clears throat> um, so there's the kind of the purpose of that question mark is just saying well, finders doesn't literally mean keepers, but it has this kind of cultural reference, um, and a more precise double definition. <clears throat> In fact, I was thinking of some earlier for a video I'm going to put together um, with some very introductory ideas around cryptics. Um, uh, with something like uh, dog, uh, dog trail. Um, now the word dog and the word trail both have a common synonym, which is follow. So if you dog someone, you're following them, and a trail, if you trail someone, then you're following them as well. So that's a strict double definition. And this clue here is similar, it's just that it, it means, it, it just needs a little bit more <coughs> lateral thinking. Um, Hang on a second, I'm gonna get some water. Okay, so that is keepers. Uh, let's try 14 across. Not crazy about recommended daily intake of fish. So, <clears throat> recommended daily intake. This might be specific to Australian lingo, I'm not sure, but this is abbreviated to RDI. You see that on the side of food products. So, we're gonna have an RDI probably in this clue. And we've got an I here, so let's imagine RDI is in the middle there. And you might see 
what word is emerging that means a fish, which is a sardine. So what's happening? Not crazy is S-A-N-E, sane. And that is about, which is to say it's around, it's, it's on the outside of this RDI, ooh, uh, RDI, and we get fish as the definition. Um, I think when I first saw this clue, I thought, not crazy, maybe that's, I looked down at the letters and thought maybe that's sane, and then RDI kind of filled the rest in. So but if I'd not noticed that, I would have noticed RDI, and it would have come together pretty quickly, I think. Um, now, 15 down. Acorn tree, ah, okay. <laughs> so as soon as I start reading this, Acorn tree I mulched for pleasure. So 10 letters long. And there's something I think most cryptic solvers are kind of unconsciously engaged in this little thought process when they first start reading a clue, which is wondering whether they're going to be looking at an anagram. And as a kind of pointer in that direction, considering that the answer is 10 letters long, and we have a selection of 10 letters here, and then even better, it's alongside a word that could indeed mean to mix up. And this 10 little letter section in particular struck me immediately as anagram, what we call fodder, uh, because it's just an unusual kind of set of words, uh, especially with the I there, it just feels like, I don't know what it is, there's an intuition you start to build up that that looks like it's gonna be an anagram of something. Um, and I think that's what it is. It's going to be mulch, and we're going to work, get a word for pleasure, uh, starting with R. Um, now, I've said all that. Is that actually true? Yes. So this is an anagram of recreation, which is another word for pleasure. <clears throat> so that is one thing to be mindful of, especially when you're starting cryptics. And in fact, some people would say, why not, <clears throat> when you start a crossword, just go through looking for clues that you think are going to be anagrams because they're the easiest to identify you get those out of the way first and then move on with the crossing letters that you've gotten um, because as soon as you see a word like mulched and you see you've got 10 letters there's a good chance that that's what is happening so and also what's useful about that is that because it's, it's, all, it's all very kind of literal you've got a word that means mixing up you've got the letters that you need and so it becomes very clear which end of the clue is the um, definition so you, you've got a lot of information immediately off the bat uh, so let's try 17 here 17 across um, okay a French copper with very loud siren initially releases criminal so first thing I think is a French you'll see this a lot and you're looking for a word for a <coughs> in French and French has a few words for that or two but Commonly, we're going to be using the word UN, either that or UNE. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, so that'll be the first two letters, A French. So we're probably looking then for a definition element in um, criminal or releases criminal. Copper, <clears throat> uh, the abbreviation for this on the periodic table is C and U. I'll get my throat sorted out. <clears throat> looking like an unusual word, but you might see a word here that means to release a criminal. So I'll put that in as um, cuffs. And let's see, very loud siren initially. <clears throat> so siren initially, that's going to give us the initial letter of siren for S. And then the mysterious part here, for those not in the know, is very loud, is FF. Now this is an abbreviation in music, I'm not sure if it stands for fortissimo or forte or something like that, um, but double F means very loud, a single F means loud I think, uh, and you will see this in cryptics all the time. So again, when you first see it, you think, well how on earth would I ever have known that, but now you do and it'll come up so often that eventually you won't even think twice. <coughs> um, there is a bit of a learning curve with cryptics for these abbreviations, but once you get the hang of it, um, and also, once you get the hang of the general kind of way of thinking about, you know, you're making these kind of 
these best guesses as to where the defini definition probably is and where the wordplay probably is, <clears throat> you start to be able to solve without necessarily having to pass every element. Excuse me. Okay, gosh, can I make it through? This throat is not helping me today. <clears throat> um, so 17 down with a U as well. U's are useful because often they are going to start with UN and it'll be clear from the from the wordplay. You, you kind of confirm that fairly quickly, but let's see. Uh, Ian's upset. So immediately I'm thinking that's an anagram of Ian's. We've got the word upset, which often is used to indicate rearranging letters. And so we're going to maybe rearrange those. And we've got an A in place. And that anagram is going to come after something. So it would come at the end here. So it might be something like that. Uh, would it likely be that, I guess? Uh, we'll see. <clears throat> Comes after lunch starter got cancelled. Let's loose. Yeah, so um, Ian's is an anagram. That's going to come at the end. And then <clears throat> we're looking for a word, therefore, that means let's loose as the final definition. <clears throat> it could just be loose, but it, it will be let's loose. Um, and we need the word lunch, except that its starter has been cancelled. So the first letter of lunch has been cancelled, which just leaves us with unch. And then A-I-N-S for the anagram of Ian's and unchanged is let's loose. Have some water, hold on. Oh boy, okay, I'm gonna barely make it here. Um, 22 across, got a long one here. Um, so English, yeah, <clears throat> English team heads to City Hall expecting light supper every afternoon. Uh, so I'm going to put the answer in. <clears throat> and the reason I was able to solve this one so quickly is that this is a, a common little trick is you've got a short answer, it's only seven letters, but you've got a really long clue. And you think, how is that all of those words are going to reduce somehow to a shorter word? Um, and then you see the word heads, and this is a common indicator to take the head letter, the first letter of one or more words. And in this case, if we take the head letter of city, hall, expecting, light, supper, every afternoon, all of the first letters spell out the word Chelsea, which is an English team. Another reference to British football. <clears throat> um, so that's all. So the, and the reason I kind of was like, ah, yeah. As soon as I started reading the clue, was that I, I thought this is a long clue, and I saw the word heads and go, oh yeah, this is going to be easy. Uh, so closing in on the end here, eighteen down. Visa left at sea celebration. So my first thought is eight letters long. Is the is the final answer, and we've got eight letters at the beginning here, and at sea. If something's all at sea, then it's kind of mixed up. So that would be our anagram indicator for these words. Uh, for these, yeah, for these words uh, or letters, and then we need a therefore a, an eight letter anagram of this, <clears throat> which is a word for a celebration, and this will be a festival. Uh, so 26 across, drug gets rodents off their face. Um, uh, Okay. Uh, okay, so this is, um, we need a word for a drug, will be our final answer. And we need a word for rodents without their face letter. So just take off the top letter of the word mice and we get ice for the drug. 23 down. Schedule a meeting, ultimately to terminate head of accounts. The word agenda comes to mind, but I'm not sure that's correct. <clears throat> Schedule a meeting ultimately. Oh, actually, no, I think it will be correct. Um, so a schedule is an agenda. We have a, which will be our a. And it's worth noting that if you see a small word like a in a clue, most often it will actually not just be there for the sake of it. It'll be there because it's part of the wordplay. Um, the golden rule generally is you want to try to include as, as few 
superfluous words as possible. So you may have a word that kind of just joins part of the clue to the rest um, for grammatical reasons, but generally you want to avoid it. And if you can, so in this case, he could have written schedule meeting ultimately without the letter A, and it would have been perfectly plausible as a sentence. So the fact that he's included the A means that it is deliberate, and that will be the A at the beginning. And then meeting ultimately. So now we're looking at one of these selection indicators where we're taking the ultimate or the final letter of meeting to give us the G. Put that in place. To terminate is to end. <clears throat> And then head of accounts is the head letter of accounts. So another one of these selection indicators gives us A for agenda, meaning a schedule. And I believe that leaves us with just this one, which um, doesn't immediately stand out to me what that is, just from the letters. So let's see. Brocading new sheet for game. Oh, it's a two word answer. Um, so I think it's an anagram of brocading that's nine letters long and we're going <clears> to <throat> spell it in a new way and we're going to get a word meaning sheet for game <clears throat> uh, and we're going to we're going to fall over at the final hurdle here uh, now something card c-a-r-d oh, bingo card there we go And wait for it. The software will tell me I'm incorrect because <laughs> in my version every answer was just a bunch of X's <clears throat> but in your version you'll see that you have the correct answers and hopefully you've completed the puzzle. Uh, so as I say any questions or queries do leave a comment. Any comments on something I might have mispassed or misunderstood then by all means. Uh, do subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. Uh, and I will be making, um, hopefully very soon, um, some very tailored beginner content. Uh, so you want to watch out for that in the weeks and months ahead. And in the meantime, thank you for being with me. Uh, I will see you again soon for another crossword. Happy puzzling until then.